Good evening, high school football fans, and welcome to a new season of The Frenzy. I'm Frank Solkowski, and she is Amy Zimmer. The first Friday night of the 2019 high school football season. Can't believe it's finally here. Yeah, all summer long, the conditioning and the off-season workouts leading to this moment. Every team in Southeast Georgia and the Low Country undefeated and with championship aspirations. Now you know how we do things here. Scores, highlight each and every Friday night, and we're going to jump right into the action. We don't like the small talk at Pooler Stadium. Top 10 matchups, Savannah Christian battling Athens Academy. The visitors, well, they came to play in this one. They're going to get on the board early in the first quarter. Four-star prospect, Lynette Whitehead going to take the direct snap. He's in for the touchdown. Later in the opening quarter, Mr. Whitehead would find the end zone a second time. Athens Academy, they're going to go up 14-0 in a blink of an eye. Savannah Christian trying to get something going without Nate Moon. The Big 22 member banged up early in the first half. Quarterback Spencer Robichaux going to connect with another Big 22 member, Marquel Brown, for a nice big pickup here. However, the drive would stall, leads to no points. Not a lot of points for the Raiders tonight. However, they weren't hard to come by for Athens Academy early second quarter. Palmer Bush calling his own number. Quarterback keeper going to go to the distance for another touchdown. All Athens Academy in this one, 35-7, the final. Time to soar over to the nest. The Hilton Head Seahawks hosting the Savannah Blue Jacket. Seahawks quarterback Gaston Moore looking for an option. Goes in the air to Cole DeMarzo, who's going to take it to the house. The Michigan State commits first touchdown of the season to put the Seahawks on the board first. Savannah trying to respond. However, the future Spartan right there demarzo with the interception on just the blue Jackets' second play a penalty called so it's good for a first down on the seahawks 33 yard line the blue jackets swarming trying to make a stop this time Moore connects with elijah thompson in the end zone Moore racking up two touchdowns in the first quarter savannah would get on the board however hilton head goes on the win 38 13. Staying in the low country, the Bluffton Bobcats hosting the Screven County Gamecocks. Screven leading 12-7 with just three minutes on the clock before the half. Gamecock quarterback Austin Markovic hands it off to Shamar Shavir, who finds an opening to get his team in the red zone. Now less than two minutes before the half, Markovic to Gary Hawkins. However, the Bobcats forcing a turnover and take it on their own nine-yard line. Bobcats quarterback Lee Kirkland driving his team down the field with just 30 seconds left. Can't find an option, takes it himself. The Bobcats not able to capitalize. Bluffton heading to the locker room, trailing Screven 12-7. This one going to overtime, the final 44-41 with Screven coming out on top. Let's get down to the hill. Richmond Hill fans excited about a new season of Wildcat football. Home team on the move early in the second half against Grovetown. Kenyon Hunter going to get the call. He's going to find the hole, and he's got the nice pickup for the home team. Richmond Hill going to drive the field. Then they're going to find the end zone on the pass to tight end Brett Kramer. That touchdown going to make it 35-0 Richmond Hill. The Wildcat defense had things on lockdown all night long. Nathan Vickers and company with the big tackle for loss here. And then it's the defense doing the scoring. Snap can't be handled by the Grovetown quarterback. How about the scoop and the score for Richmond Hill? All Wildcats in this one. They win in shutout fashion. 44-0 the final. Coming off a playoff appearance a year ago, facing Jenkins County, 12 nothing Knights at the half, but here comes Jenkins County in the third quarter. Darren Burton with the short touchdown run. That's gonna make it a 12-6 game. Windsor Forest right back. Michael Calabero, he's getting the call, and he's off the left side and into the open field. Huge gain here. Knights were on the move, goal were bound. But the visitors will come up big on defense down near the goal line. Brandon Goodman with the interception denying the Knights here. But the Windsor Forest defense and the clock, oh, they were the best friends of the Knights in this one. Windsor Forest going to open the season with a win. 14-6, the final. Now, in case you missed it, Thursday night, the high school football season getting underway here in Savannah. You had Jenkins New Hampstead. Late in the first quarter, Demazio Harris getting a call. He goes four yards for the touchdown with a two-point conversion. 8-0, Jenkins on top of the Phoenix. 
Jenkins not letting up. New Hampstead back to punt. Kick going to be blocked by a kilo stone. That's going to end up deep in Phoenix territory. That's going to lead to another Warrior touchdown. This time it's Donovan Hall with the tough run to the end zone. That's going to make it 14 0. The New Hampstead offense looking to get something going, but that Warrior D not having anything to do with it. Here's Aquilo Stone again. He's not a big 22 member for nothing. Big sack there. Second quarter, New Hampstead's offense going to come to life. Randy Gerald throws one up for Sam Brown. He's a big 22 member. They're all over the field. Going to come down with a nice catch. Couple plays later, Phoenix on the board. Gerald going to hit Anthony Thomas down the middle. Passing catch goes for 25 yards. That made it 14-6. But Jenkins able to respond just before the half. Little trickery. Ronald Cooper going to end up with the ball. He rolls and rolls and rolls and finds a wide open Darius Bush for the touchdown. And in case you missed it, Jenkins County for real. They rough up New Hampstead on a Thursday night. 35-12 the final. All right, we're just getting started here on the Frenzy. Plenty more highlights coming up after the break. Yeah, we're making... Welcome back to the Frenzy here on WJCL 22 News at 11. All right, we're not going to waste too much more time getting back into the action. We're going to get out to Little Wissy. Nathan Clark's debut as head coach at South Effingham. Well, it was a good one. Mustangs on the road at Long County early on. South quarterback Taylor Jackson going to get his team started. How about the keeper? He's calling his own number, and he's off to the races. Nobody going to catch him. Touchdown, Mustangs. Taylor Jackson getting the Mustangs off and running. 
Big play coming up by the South special teams. Blue Tide forced to punt. Ah, that kick is going to be blocked. South in business once again. Ball going to go into the hands of Big 22 member Rocco Griffin. He is going to get into the end zone for his first touchdown of the season. Quickly, 14-0 South Effingham. How about the defense? Hunter Tyndall with the big hit there for South Effingham. Mustangs back into the end zone for a third time in the opening quarter. This time it's Cameron Edwards with the honors. And, well, you kind of got the idea of how this one went. South Effingham rolls over Long County. 62-27 the final. All right, so a good start to the season for South Effingham. Meanwhile, back in Springfield. The Effingham County Rebels kicking off the season. Our Rick Snow is at the Palace in the Pines and has those highlights. In fact, the Rebels have the luxury of opening the season with three straight home games. Effingham County compiled a 7-4 record a year ago, reaching the postseason, while Evans from Augusta won just three games. This game is a rematch of last season's beginning, which the Rebels won 9-6 on the road. The Rebels take the field for the opening kickoff in front of a big crowd at Rebel Field in the first quarter. DeAndre Johnson for the Rebels keeping the ball and picking up a first down as they start downfield. But the Evans defense stopped that drive as linebacker Jaden Burkhalter comes up with a big defensive play. The Rebels can play defense too as Jalen Dow stops the Knights quarterback Leighton Lackey for a loss. In the first play of the second quarter, Johnson's pass is picked off by Alvin Warner, returned across midfield to set up Evans. Quarterback Caleb Jackson scrambles for the Knights and then finds Deshaun Wallace open over the middle at the eight yard line. Wallace does the rest, it was six to nothing Evans. Just before halftime, Jordan Spann pitches the ball to Lackey on the reverse and he fires downfield to KJ Hopgood for the touchdown. It was 12 nothing at the half. The Rebels would put on a furious fourth quarter rally as that falls a little short as Evans takes an 18-15 win, but what a finish for the Rebels. But lightning was the big issue in this one as the start of this one was delayed for an hour. Then they did get underway. The Jackets take advantage. The opening kickoff, Glen Hills muffs it. They uh, recover. Yellow Jackets score immediately. And Glen Hills then was stopped on their next possession. And more weather problems came. They just were able to start. Uh, they're underway as 14 to 6. Jeff Davis at halftime right now. And. <laughs> Hopefully they'll complete it. It'll be a real late night for these young men. So much, Rick. So 14-6, Jeff Davis leads at halftime at 11.30. Whoo, breakfast, <laughs> maybe, maybe be done by breakfast. Still to come on the Frenzy, we're going to get you set for a little Saturday high school football. Yeah, we got a triple header over in Statesboro. We're telling you all about the Irk Russell Classic after the break.
Welcome back to the Frenzy. Thomas Hayward hosting Hilton Head Christian. How's this for getting the party started? Opening kickoff and Brennan Student gets the ball and well, He's not going to be stopped. Eagles soaring to the end zone. Big special teams play to open this one. But the Rebels respond. They call him Bruza Pusha. If that is needed, it's the case. He's got a big pickup right up the middle. Seconds later, it's right back to number two. This time, the play goes for six. The pass and catch for Thomas Hayward for the big touchdown. Then the Christian special teams with a mistake. Back to punt, ball on the ground, and the Rebels there to gobble up the punter. Seconds later, the offense is back on the field and back into the end zone. This time, the touchdown pass goes to Brandon Davis. And Thomas Hayward wins this one going away 46-22 the final. Quickly, reminder, Saturday, the Eric Russell Classic over at Paulson Stadium, Bullock Academy, Pinewood, 10 a.m. Then you got Raven County, Bremen at 6. And you got Benedictine and Burke County in the nightcap there at Paulson Stadium. That's going to do it for us.